first of all about me. Uh, my name is unusual. It's my Buddhist name. I was given some 15 years ago. Um, <coughs> I've been an ASF Apache Software Foundation member since uh, 2005. Uh, a, a Lucene and Solar committer since just June, so not very long. Um, I uh, have, over the last year, um, uh, rewritten the, uh, the back end of the admin UI, so the back end of the front end, um, uh, with AngularJS, uh, hoping to make it more uh, uh, easy to extend so that it can grow with Solar as Solar grows. Um, I'm a, a software developer, uh, trainer, and consultant. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> the admin UI was uh, is basically some static HTML uh, plus JavaScript and CSS. All it does is consumes the same APIs that are available to you. There's n there are no uh, APIs or anything that's specific to the am, uh, admin UI. Uh, so this new uh, this was new in sort of 4.x uh, and was created by Stefan, who we have here with us. Um, <coughs> what I would say about it is it's uh, having spent time looking at it, having spent time trying to understand it in order to uh, to, to change things under the bonnet. It's, it's a, I found it a delightfully impressive piece of work. Uh, the level of subtlety that's going on under the bonnet is, is, is quite substantial. Uh, and I've very much enjoyed uh, engaging with and connecting with that. So what are we going to be talking about? Um, we're not really going to have many slides. Uh, I'm hoping that we will end up with lots of demo uh, and an opportunity for uh, you to ask questions. So. The way, I've the, the, the way I conceived of this presentation is, uh, I've, as I say, I've done a lot of training. I'm, I've probably taught uh, five or six courses a year uh, for the last five years. Uh, so teaching solar, f generally speaking, taking four days over it. What I'm going to try and do now is condense four days of training into 30 minutes. Yeah, so I'm setting myself something of a tall order. But what I found increasingly, uh, as I've got to know the admin UI better, is how much it's possible to do with the admin UI without leaving it, and how much, um, actually, uh, just a couple of days ago, I found myself thinking the admin UI is the wrong name. Yeah, the admin UI implies that all you do is administrate it. Yeah, add a new core, add a new collection, and things like that. Actually, it's, it's, uh, a surprisingly good um, exploration tool. Yeah, and that's what I'm hoping to show uh, in this presentation. Um, but first of all, before I go on, can I just see how, m uh, how many of you here are, would you consider yourselves new to solar? Okay. Uh, how many of you have used the admin UI? Okay. And how many of you have actually uh, looked at the, sort of the code behind it? Uh, behind the admin UI? OK. OK, thank you. Now, that just helps me set the, uh, set the scene. So <coughs> as I say, this is all demo. So, and usually the, 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 uh, the moral is don't work on stage with children, animals, or computers. Yeah? So I like to set myself a challenge. Uh, and uh, let's see where we end up. So <coughs> what I want to do is everything that I'm going to do is going to be with the admin UI, except for this. So this is, this is the only bit that was done at the command line. Yep. So if you see what I've got, and I think I can get a mouse. Can I get a mouse? No. Yes, it's there somewhere. Uh, so first of all, check out Solar uh, from Subversion. You could do it equally well with your own. Uh, with a with a, a normal download. Uh, then I started Solar. I started one of them here, port eight nine eight five. I pushed it on a, a couple of port numbers to, for my own reasons. Um, 
start it in cloud mode, that's minus C. So that the cloud mode allows you to have multiple solar instances working together. So I'm starting one running on port 8985. Then I start a second one running on port 8986. Yeah. Uh, and then having started the two solar instances, I repeat, th this is one command repeated twice. Yeah. It calls a script called ZKCLI and it uploads some configurations. Uh, so, we, so we've got some basic configurations in our solar. Yep. Um, I have had conversations with people today. Uh, my aim is to uh, remove, over the next few weeks, the necessity to do these second two steps. You should be able to do these by clicking on a button in the UI. Yep. That, that's uh, what I'm hoping to do. So, once we've done all of that, in, in a normal environment, when we're running on port 8983, these would be the two URLs for, uh, uh, for the admin UI. So the old UI is just a slash solar. Uh, the new UI has been uh, in solar since 5.2, but kind of hidden on a different URL. If you try it with 5.2, you'll probably find that quite about 50% of the things don't quite work. Uh, it's got a lot better since. Um, uh, yes, so, so we're going to be working with the new UI now. So the demo is going to be, a, uh, uh, <coughs> first of all, I'll just give you a presentation of the, the, the various things we can do. Then I will posit a few scenarios of things we might want to do using the UI and see how we can use the different tabs in conjunction. And that's the point at which it gets really interesting. So let's have a look. So here we have the UI. I think I probably want to make it a little bit bigger. Can people see that? Well enough. So first of all, we're seeing, uh, <coughs> we're seeing the dashboard, which is telling us a few things like, well, actually, we're currently, this is currently running trunk, but it, the ad, so 6.0, not yet released. Um, don't worry. Um, but it's exactly the same code on 5.4 or 5.x as it is on trunk. There's, there's, there's next to no differences. Um, if you see up here, at the top right, we have a, uh, a button, new UI. This will be present in 5.4, okay? So if I click on that, suddenly we're in the new version, the AngularJS version. It looks mostly the same. But what you'll notice over here, it's saying, look, we don't have any collections or cores available to be working with. So a solar instance can contain many uh, indexes, all for different purposes. So the first thing we need to do is like maybe in a relational database, you have MySQL, you can have multiple databases. It's a bit like that. So the first thing we need to do is to create ourselves a collection. So uh, I'm using the, the latest version of, uh, of the admin UI. Some of these features uh, are brand, brand new and will be in 5.4. Uh, here we have collections. If I click, click on collections, I can now click on add. I can say revo, revolution, okay, and I can say well, what configurations do I want to use? So if you remember the commands we ran at the beginning to upload some, a set of configuration files, yeah, these, uh, that created these two configuration sets here. So I'm going to pick the data-driven one. Yeah. And then when I click Add, hopefully it should work for a little while, and you will now find there you have revolution, okay? Now, what you might be thinking is, but, but, but hang on, shouldn't there be a core with it? For those of you that, that, that are paying attention. Remember I start, that, that puzzled me for a while. I think, oh my God, I've got a horrible bug. What on earth is going on? Until it occurred to me, it's solar cloud and I've got two of them, yeah? 
I only wanted a replication factor of one, so actually it's gone and put it on the other, other node. Yeah? So, again, this is the sort of thing I shouldn't do live, because I haven't practiced it, but anyway, what we'll do is we'll delete that node, uh, collection, rather, Revolution. It asks you to retype the name just to be really sure. We'll add it back again, Revolution, config set, data driven, and we will say replication factor two. We'd like two copies of this data, please. We've got two nodes, two copies, please. Add. So there you go. Now if I look here, you can see Here's the collection revolution. It's just got one shard. So the shards are when you take an index and break it into separate things. So the simple image I have, if I picked up this glass here and dropped it on the, smashed it on the floor, I would have lots of shards of glass. Yep. If I take all of those shards and stick them back together, I'd have a glass. Same thing with an index. Take the index, break it into pieces. Each of those pieces is a shard. None, none of those shards are worth anything on their own. It's only when you stick them together that you make an index, or in this case, a collection. So we now have everything that we need to be working with. Yep, we've got a collection and we're ready to go. So we can see here as well, there you go, there is, a, there is the core as we expected, and here is our collection. So we select that. So we get a number of options. Uh, that allow us to do a, a, a variety of things. So first of all, uh, let's look at what does uh, Solar, what does an index do? This is going to be a really, really fast uh, whiz through uh, what uh, an enterprise search engine does. Okay. So first of all, let me say, let's say we have uh, uh, something we'll be mentioning uh, later, uh, uh, much ado about nothing to reference a great English playwright. Um, so if we imagine on the left, this is a sentence that is in a document I'm about to index. Yeah? And on the right, I have text that a user is typing into a search. Okay? So <coughs> I might search for much ado about, what was it? I can't remember, what was it? Yeah. So I can't do an exact match search. I have to break the, the, my words up into separate tokens. So what I can do here is I tell it which type of field do I want to use. And I'm going to choose one called text general. There it is. And when I click analyze values, actually I'm going to switch off for both. Hang on, what's that doing? See? Good way to find myself a bug, isn't it? Right, much ado about nothing, much ado about text, general, and search. So what we can see here is uh, the steps that Solar has gone through in order to chop my sentence into its constituent parts. Yeah? So we can see, uh, first of all, uh, it's, the, it's the, what's here called the standard tokenizer, has chopped much ado about nothing, four words. Somewhere further down, um, it's done lowercase. So the lowercase filter has converted it all into lowercase. Yeah? Simple, what that means is that uh, if I get oh, come over here, so if you see on the left and the right, the case doesn't match. Yeah. So a Lucene search is an exact match search. So case matters. So if I now analyze, if we look here, much ado about nothing or lowercase, and I come down to the bottom here, much ado about. They're both lowercase. They will match. These terms will match. Yeah. So using this analysis pane, I can get to see what are the, the what are the uh, how am I breaking down my incoming text into uh, <coughs> into uh, tokens, and how is my 
query also going to be broken down into tokens? Yeah. And then see how are they matching? Because if they don't match, then you might find yourselves having a big problem. Documents are just not being found. So that's having looked at analysis. Next, what we're going to say, look at is we actually want to put some content into our index. Yeah. So let's say uh, we, um, when we put content into the index, we're posting documents. Documents are made up of fields. Yeah. And fields have a type. And types, as we saw here with the type text general, types have uh, a sequence, uh, have a way of converting that type into something that's going to be put onto di in the index in, on disk. So, for example, if it's a number, is that number an integer or a floating point? How should it be encoded on disk? It makes a big difference whether it's a floating point or an integer. Similarly, if it's a string, do you want to put the whole string in, in which case you have to have an exact match of that whole string, or do you want to break it down in some way? Yep. These are all the things that the field type defines. So if we come over to the schema, we can have a look at various fields, and we can see the various field types. If you look here, as you see, in this particular uh, index, we don't have very many fields defined. Yep. Uh, as you can see, fortunately, earlier this week, um, I added some new buttons along the top. Um, so Solar has had in it a, a managed schema API, which allows you to dynamically create new fields. It's been there for some time, but it's been a, a big a major missing feature on this, the UI. So it now has it. So if I click Add, um, what can I call it? Title. Yep. I can call that, field, that document title, text, make it a text general. Um, and that's going to be enough for now. There are plenty of options here that, that would take a longer time to explain. If I click Add, now I think there's a feature here. Oh, no, it's shown up. There you go. So we can now see I have my field, my field called Title, and I can see mentioned down here that it is of type text general. Yep. So I'm now ready to create. I've got... Uh, I can see there's an ID field available. I'm just going to create a document that has an ID and a title. Okay? So I'm going to go into the Documents tab. Okay? In here, I'm going to type in a single document um, in JSON. So ID, uh, Shakespeare... One. The, the JSON you type here is uh, it's a sort of superset of JSON. You don't always have to type quotes, which say can save some time. Title, um, let's call it Hamlet. Yeah. So there you go. There is a very simple document. If I click Submit, we can see at the bottom it's now saying success. That has now been indexed into our into our index. So we can now come to the query tab. Yep. And we can type in Hamlet. A quick hint, if you want to do it the simplest way to, if you press enter on a, on a text area, it adds the enter character into the box. If you press tab, go to the next one, which isn't a text area, press enter, it executes. So tab enter is the quickest way to execute a query. Um, so we can see here, we've got our document back. Yeah, good. OK, so let's, uh, let's go through that again. So what I'm going to do is uh, go back to my schema. I'm going to find the title field. I'm going to be a bit naughty. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to recreate the field title. This time I'm going to make it of te type text en. OK? 
Okay? It's added. Let's have a quick look at this, uh, this field type. Text en. So now I've gone to the schema browse, uh, to, to analysis again, to have a look at what does this field type do? How does it differ? So we can see that uh, some words have been removed. So we have a stop word filter in English has removed a couple of words. Okay? So because they, they are obviously considered in not very significant yeah, in, in the English language. Okay? So now let's go back to documents. Instead of doing just simple JSON, I'm going to go to the solo command option. It's suggesting there some XML, but we can do it in JSON as well. So this time it's Shakespeare 02. No, hang on. I do need to tell it ID. Shakespeare 02. Then I'm going to say title, much ado about nothing, comma, ID, Shakespeare 03, title, it's not really a title, is it? But I may pretend it was. Let's pretend he wrote a play called that. OK? Uh, so now I submit that. And you can see over on the bottom here, it's showing success. So now our documents are present. OK? Let's go back to the schema. And now I want to find those documents. Let's say I want to find an exact match. So I'm going to use quotes around it, which says, find me a phrase match. So, much ado about nothing, okay? Search, there you go, I've got a good match. Okay, makes sense, yeah, quite straightforward. So now I want to find the other one. To be or not to be, okay? So now let's find that one. and the darn thing worked. This is why I say don't ever work with computers live on stage. It wasn't supposed to work. But the good thing is, we've got this really good admin UI that will help us work out why. Yeah. What was supposed to happen, if we go back here to the analysis tab, if I type in to be or not to be, and I find myself my way to text en, and I click search, look what happens. So we have this, this, the standard tokenizer chops it up into these tokens, and then we have the stop word filter has recognized all of those words as stop words and removed them all. So in theory, having indexed that field in a field type that is called text en, None of those words should have made it into my index at all. But they did. OK. So the first thing we need to do is to look at our schema. Yep. So we come back to the schema, and we find the title field. And we find, ah, bingo, right. That's it, yes. There is a copy field to text. The text field, if I click on the text field, look, it's of type text general, which doesn't have the stop word filter on it. Yeah. So the, te uh, the, the, the underscore text field is defined as the default search field. So when I went back to query and searched here, I was searching against the default field. If I do, however, title to be or not to be, like so, and I do that search, kablam, nothing. Yeah. So hopefully that, I, I should pretend that that was all intentional. Uh, but hopefully it gives you a good idea of how we can switch between these different panes. So we, we started with the collections 
tab to create our collection in the first place. Uh, we then went to the schema tab and created our field. Uh, we then actually deleted the field and re-added it. Um, and then we, uh, we created a new document and then we went to query on it. So we've used, in that short period, we've used quite a large amount of, uh, uh, quite a large part of the admin UI. Okay. So, um, what I'd like to do now is uh, <coughs> just look at, um, let's just have a remind myself of where we were. So we've, we've had a look at some of the tabs and we've done an example. And we've done this example of to be or not to be. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a look at, uh, at, at an example of, of changing field types. Yeah. So <coughs> so um, let's say that very simply, I think I'll keep this really simple. So we've now got this document typed to be or not to be in our index. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, in the title field, it didn't index correctly, did it? Because to be or not to be, all the terms were, were, were lost. So what we want to do is we want to correct that. Yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the title field. Go. That's gone. And I'm going to add it back again, title. This time as text, general. Yeah? And add. Now I'm going to come back to the query pane, and I'm going to search for title to be or not to be. It's not found it. Is that expected? Yeah. The, uh, the field type defines, is used at two times. One time when the content is written into the index, and another time when the query is executed against the index. So it was some time ago that I indexed that document. And it was, when it was indexed, it was the old field type was used. So if we come back here, um, unfortunately, I can't remember what. I'm just going to do a simple star colon star search to find, there it is, to be or not to be, Shakespeare 03. So if I come back to documents, ID Shakespeare 03, title to be or not to be, submit. This time I go back and I do my title to be or not to be, search. It found it, found it this time. Yeah. So the thing to remember here, you know, uh, traditionally you're told don't ever change the type of a field. Yeah. It's generally not a good idea. The thing to bear in mind is what gets written into the index. What is the field that gets put into the index? Yeah. Um, if you change the field type, if, for example, if we change the field from being a long to a float, you would have a, f a binary encoding of a, a, of a long, and then you would take in a query which you would convert into a float, and then look for that float string in your index. Of course, you're not going to find it, because it's completely different binary encoding. Yeah? So that, that's uh, something to watch out for when, if, you, if you ever need to change your schema. OK, so the final thing we're going to look at, let, let's, uh, so let's see. I'm going to create two more documents. ID person01 uh, nay a title I'm going to call it use the title field again uh, Harry Potter okay uh, actually that's not quite right 
because I need a curly in the beginning. Now I'm going to do ID person 02, title Harry James Potter, and a close square bracket. So that should be enough to create me my document. Yeah, well, my documents. Yes, I've got a success, so I'm good. So I'm now going to come back here. I'm now going to search. Remember, it's by default all fields are copied to this text field, which is the default field. So if I now search for Harry, I should get both of those documents back. Okay. Now it's interesting to notice that the um, the order in which these have appeared is that intentional? I wonder. Okay, so what we can do is we can go to the field list and say, give me all fields, star, but also give me this virtual field called the score. Go. Now we can see, oh look, this one has, has a score calculated of 0.92, whereas this one has got a score of 0.808. Okay, so what Solorant Lucene is saying in this case is that the first one is considered a better match. Yeah. Now, I could tell you why, but let's see if we can have a quick look and find out if we can make it tell us more. I'm going to add a, a parameter in here called debug. I'm going to enable debug query, and then I'm going to add in here debug dot query uh, explain dot structured. These, what you'll find is these are relatively obscure parameters that I've, I've learned and found incredibly useful, and that I will be adding into finding ways to wheedle them into the UI to make all of these things uh, that bit more simpler to do. But if we execute that query, now what we see is we see those scores as we had them, but now we can see for, th for this document, person 01, we can see a nice JSON structure of exactly how that score was calculated. Yeah? Uh, and you could probably go and read lots of uh, academic papers on the, the precise mathematics that was done here. Yeah? But we can see 0.92, uh, blah, 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 blah. And here we have, if you see, this document has a field norm of 0.5, whereas this one down here has a field norm of 0.4. That's the difference. The field norm is based on the field length. The longer a document, the less relevant it's considered. That's why Harry James Potter scored less than Harry Potter. I could go and index Harry Potter wizard and then search, and they would both score the same. Yeah. So, what I've just shown you is how we change field types. We've just looked at how we scores, how we do scores. Um, I'm just going to do one last thing. I think I've got this right. Let's see if I run this little script. I think it's doing it. Um, if we look here, okay, I'm going to have to make the screen a little bit smaller. So if I now, I've chosen my particular uh, shard, uh, my particular replica, and I'm going to click on segment info. We can see our index there. Um, Unfortunately, my script that I was hoping would do some nice things has just completely failed. So what we have here is uh, the index uh, is made up of segments. Every time I commit a document, it creates a new segment. What this tab allows you to do is to see how files are laid out on disk. Yeah. You can see how many segments do I have. It will show you. Are some of them ready to be deleted? Are some of them ready to be merged? What I'd hoped is that little script I had there would be 
pump posting loads, loads of content into Solar. And we could click this auto refresh tab and it would be up dynamically updating. Unfortunately, didn't quite. There's something I missed. So I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Um, any questions? Yeah? So when you were uh, serving the command, um, you were logging into the host of the web command and everything like that? So uh, it, the question was, does updating a field uh, via the UI that you've just seen uh, update the schema file in the back end? Uh, first thing I'll say is those buttons are so new they're not even in subversion yet. They only exist on my laptop. But they will be there uh, by 5.4. So when 5.4 comes out, they will be there. Um, all they're doing, they're, they're very lightweight. All they're doing is using the managed schema API. So there's an API that allows you to do that, to add and remove fields. Yeah? Uh, you have to tell Solar to be in managed schema mode. You can either do that by changing a configuration or you can just use the configuration set, the data-driven. If you use the data-driven, then it's already in managed schema mode. And uh, when you do an update to your schema, there is a separate file that it maintains that, that you're not supposed to change. You're supposed to let Solar manage it. Yeah? And that will either be on, in your configuration directory on disk if you're not in Solar Cloud mode, or it will be in, uh, in Zookeeper. Perhaps one more question. Uh, to update it, to, if you want to update it, then what you would do is just post it over the top. Yeah, so uh, if you use the same ID, it will basically what it will do is identify that document in your index, delete it, and then re add it. Thank you very much, and I'll be just outside if there's any more questions. Also, if, uh, if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh, wouldn't it be neat if, come and tell me those as well. I'm really curious. So thank you.